Just a quick summary of what we did in class on Monday. I gave you a probability distribution to the possible grades of the sample space. Our grades A, B, C, D, and F. So if a list or a set of all possible outcomes is considered the sample space. If you also give the probabilities of each one of the outcomes, then that's the probability distribution or probability model. I've given you that the probability uh, grade is scored of an A is 0.25, and in fact, the same probability is for B, D, and F. But remember, the total of probabilities of all possible outcomes should sum to one. That leaves the probability of a C is equal to zero. In other words, you cannot make a C on this exam. Find the probability that the grade is passing. That means D or better. So A, probability of A, probability of B, probability of D, all added together gives you 0.75. It looks like we did in class probability of A or B or C or D. So you could have added these four probabilities together. We decided to use the complement rule and say that was one minus the probability of the complement of passing, which is failing. One minus the probability of failing is also 0.1, uh, sorry, 0.75. Find the probability the grade is not an A. Using the complement rule again, the complement of not an A is an A. And I remember in class we said that must be one Sorry, the probability of not an A, and some of you asked me what that notation was. Some books will use the C to mean complement. Some books will use a little, I believe, it's actually just like a top part of a square, just those two sides, and those symbols both mean complement. Using the complement rule, it's one minus the probability of making an A, which is 1 minus 0 0.25, 0 0.75 again. Uh, yes, you could have said, what is the probability of not an A, and could have added the probabilities of B plus the probability of C, that is my husband's Maserati, uh, D or F, add it all together. Now, this next question involves conditional probability. What if you know something has already happened how does that affect the next outcome? So if you know that someone has passed the quiz, what's the probability that they're gonna pass the next quiz, quiz number two? And in the statement here is that the probability that they will pass, a student will pass, a D or better, the second quiz, given they pass the first quiz, is so equal 0.7. What is the probability that the student passes the second given the student has passed the first quiz? This is our notation. It's that vertical bar. What's the probability that the student passes, and I'll put in here quiz two, given that they passed quiz one? And that is given to be 0.7. The complement is that they passed quiz one now, what is the probability that they'll fail quiz two? Since the sum of those two probabilities, because there are only two possible outcomes, you either pass quiz two or fail quiz two, the sum of these outcomes need to be one, so that means that this probability, this conditional probability, is 0.3. The next phrase in the statement was, the probability that a student will pass the second quiz given that's the little buzzword, they did not pass the first quiz is 0.6. Given the student fails the first quiz, what's the probability that they pass the second? So just a rewording of the phrase that's in the beginning of the problem. The probability that they pass the second quiz given they fail the first quiz is 0.6. Using the complement rule, the other only other outcome, given that you failed quiz one, what's the probability that you fail quiz two? 
must sum to 1, so this is equal to 0.4. We're going to turn the page over and look at that tree. This is a fresh start. We said you take quiz 1. From the first page, we found that the probability of passing quiz 1, the first question, gave us a probability of 0.75. That means the probability that we fail quiz 1 is 0.25. The outcomes on a, from a point must sum to 1. The outcomes from this point must sum to 1. Given you've passed quiz 1, so we're back in that first table. Given you passed quiz 1, what's the probability you passed quiz 2? We said was 0 0.7. Given you passed quiz 1, what's the probability that you fail quiz 2? Was 0.3. And the bottom branch, given you've failed quiz 1, what's the probability you pass quiz 2? That was given in the statement to be 0.6. You fail quiz 1 and you fail quiz 2, 0.4. What's the probability that you pass the first and you fail the second? So we have two things that have to happen here, and that's going to use our multiplication rule. The probability that we pass the first and, so now this is going to decrease our probability because now two things have to happen. Probability that we pass the first quiz is 0.75, but I only get a third, or roughly a third, of that probability because now I have to also fail quiz 2. So what is the probability that you fail quiz 2 given you've passed quiz 1? So these events happen in time. Quiz 1, you take that quiz, you pass it, and now you have to look at the probability that you fail quiz 2 given you pass quiz 1. That's the branch above in the tree where we passed quiz 1 and fail quiz two. So following along on the tree diagram, that's pass quiz one and fail quiz two. Multiplying those two probabilities together would give you the outcome, or sorry, give you the probability. The next one is pass the second quiz. Well, on the tree, I notice that here's quiz two. I either pass quiz two, having already passed quiz one, or I pass quiz two, failing quiz one. So those are the two branches, fail and then pass quiz two, or pass and fail. I need to figure out this branch and this branch. Moving along the branch is the multiplication rule. If I want to add an additional uh, outcome, so I can be on this branch or I can take this branch that is the addition rule. So pass quiz one and pass quiz two, that's the top branch. I'm going to multiply those two together and get 0.75 times 0.7. Or I could be on the lower branch, fail quiz one and then pass quiz two. So or the alternate can happen, I could fail quiz one and then pass quiz two. Multiplying these two terms together, multiplying these two terms together, and then generate the sum of those two would be your answer. The last question is pass the first or pass the second. So if we go back up here, passing the first can happen in two ways. Passing the first, passing the second, or another branch, pass the first, and fail the second. So I'd want to calculate the product of these two probabilities and add the product of these two. That creates one term in a sum, a second term in a sum. Passing the first quiz and passing the second or passing the first quiz and failing the second. So I have, let me, I've broken down the branches. Pass, pass or pass, fail. Both of those would satisfy the event of passing the first. 
What about the event of passing the second? There are a couple of outcomes that could lead us to passing the second. I could pass the first and pass the second. Notice this is a duplicate um, outcome satisfying the event. Or I could fail the first and then pass the second. There are only, out of these four different outcomes, three unique outcomes satisfying these events. So I don't want to duplicate. I don't want to include more than one copy of this probability and double count. The addition rule says I'm going to add the probability that I pass the first quiz and pass the second only once. So I'm going to calculate the product of pass pass, add it to pass fail, and add it to fail pass. If I included that additional outcome, most likely this is going to be greater than one and a probability can never be greater than one just like it can't be less than zero.